Hey, and welcome back to the Emlyn in the Mix podcast, season three, episode seven. I hope you've had an amazing week. We are back to discuss music technology news, software, hardware, whatever it is in the world of music and music technology. We cover it on this podcast. Thank you to the regular listeners for coming back week to week, enjoying the podcast, supporting it. And for those of you who are new, what is this podcast about? Well, I more or less just said it just then. We're going to be talking about all topics, new music hardware, music technology, music software. We cover it here on the channel. And if you'd like that sort of stuff you'd like studio inspiration music recording inspiration or just you're into music gear then you'll love this podcast so without further ado you can if you're watching here on the youtube we are simulcast on youtube as well uh vodcast i guess is the term i don't know that sounds kind of cheesy but anyway without further ado we are on youtube as well but the podcast obviously if you're listening we're a podcast as well so Let's just get stuck into what has been happening around in the world of music and, of course, Native Instruments. Heavy hitters in the music technology scene have just released a new instrument, which is Prime Bass, a session bassist. Yes, we all need session bassists. There are plenty of these session session bass style plugins on the market at the moment. However... You know, coming from Native Instruments, you know it's going to be a a high-caliber instrument. You know it's going to have authentic-sounding bass. Now, unlike Modo Bass from IK Multimedia, this is just based on this particular instrument. It's just based off the one bass, I believe. We're going to go through and just have a quick look at it here and have a quick listen to it. So what is Prime Bass? So authentic, playable, classic. The essential low-end tone of an iconic single-coil electric bass guitar with over 350 playable patterns and phrases across a range of genres and craft your own bass lines and solo melodies. So one of the things that Native Instruments does with these instruments that they release, like the guitar, I think they had Sunburst guitar or something like that, is they also have like actual MIDI files inside those instruments that play a particular rhythm or a line of music, which is pretty cool because, and you can also change the key of it and so forth and then implement it into your track if you like a particular groove or rhythm. So this is no different. Prime Bass actually has that as well. If you can, if you're watching the video, you can see the GUI here. You get a nice big picture of the bass that's actually been sampled. And then you can see your patterns here and your melodies here. So you can actually choose, pick and choose which ones you want. Let's have a quick listen to Prime Bass here just quickly and then we're going to read a little bit more about it. So let's have a listen. It's a very good demo, by the way. Uh, yeah fantastic demo it'd be really good to know who the artists are on these demos because they're just fan absolutely fantastic i don't think i have the name of the artist here but shout out to whoever did that that's like the main demo for prime bass there's a bunch of other demos there as well there's a prime bass walk through here if you're on the native instruments website if you hop over to that you can check that out so harness the past inspire the future prime bass delivers the classic sound of one of the world's most iconic electric basses captured from an original 1981 cherry sunburst solid body bass guitar wow that is a mouthful built in the usa with an abundance of riffs loops and melodies composed and performed by professional session musicians prime bass offers everything you need to create craft a soulful freestyle groove. 
Plectrum picked pop bass lines, snappy, funk-infused slaps, and everything in between. You know that prime bass is gonna deliver. So it's a classic 80s bass guitar, and it's recorded in stunning detail. As you can hear from that demo we just played, like even some of the low, like I know bass is low already, but like even when he was playing some of the more lower notes, I don't know why if you're watching me on the video, I'm pretending like I can play a bass guitar. Although I should pick, I would like to learn the bass guitar because I love making bass rhythm, rhythms on my keyboard. Anyway, some of those lower notes, you could hear like the... I don't know how to describe it. I think it's the reverberation of the... Because it's so low, it's like wobbling back and forth. Anyway, there's probably a specialized bass term for that. But it sounded really good. So enter a low-end time warp. The musical backbone of your favorite productions, the sound of the electric bass, is one that defines time and genre. That is true, actually. Like, even in modern music... You still need a really good bass line to carry the track through. Like even in a terrible, and I'm going to say terrible because this is a this is my my podcast. Okay, if you like this song, shame on you. No, just kidding. It's it's all you know. However you see it, but that WAP song, <laughs> okay, not a great song in my opinion. Okay, maybe the sum it's an amazing song, and. But what carries that song is the bass, that bass line. There's no actual melody or rhythm in that song other than the bass and there's a drum beat and that's it. But the bass is what ke- ke- keeps it going. And that that's a, like, that's a terrible example. But, you know, the bass line is such an important part of the musical piece. So from the depths of the rowdiest rock pit to the heart of contemporary studios, it's the force that makes you move, no matter your style. Journey back in time to explore the historic impact of this timeless instrument and discover how you can carve its future with this, with the intuitive performance features of Prime Bass. I'm actually going to have to get this instrument because I love... I Look, personally, me, I really love the Moto Bass by IK Multimedia. I've spoken about this on the podcast many times. I absolutely love that plug-in instrument. It just sounds so authentic and you have a bunch of different bass guitars and you can change the way it's played and the style and so forth. I just love it. But this prime bass sounds pretty beast. I'm going to be honest. And again, it's such an essential instrument when putting your tracks together. It's sort of like you could think of a bass, and this is probably going to end up being a very terrible analogy, <laughs> but I'm going to go with it. Imagine you've got a sandwich and you don't have any ham inside your sandwich. You just got two pieces of bread put together and you ate that, right? That's your music track. Put a bit of ham in the middle, a bit of flavor, a bit of protein. That's your baseline, okay? So there, there's my analogy. I hope it helped, but it gave it, gave it some flavor. So, hone your tone. Dial in vintage modeled tone control and add transformer and tube saturation to harness the full character of this classic bass. Mix in up to two microphone signals and send your sound through an arsenal of two guitar amps, 13 cabinets, and two new contact bass amp additions. Bass Invader and Bass Pro. Explore a comprehensive collection of 19 stomp boxes. That's pretty cool and modulation effects with high-grade vintage compressors, studio EQ reverb, and delay emulations to get your sound release sounding great. Build effects from the ground up or be inspired by the extensive, not expensive, extensive library of included presets. But being that it is native instruments, it is a little bit more on the dearer side, but you got to remember you're getting a high-end instrument. It is actually, if you think about it, it's 149 Australian dollars. It's probably, I think, it, I believe, don't quote me on it's probably like 80 or maybe it's 99 USD. I, I always only have the Australian dollars. I'm going to have to fix that so that I know that most of my listeners are USD spenders. But I dare say it's 99 USD. And if you think about it, like if you were to buy a bass and then learn how to play a bass, 
And, you know, it's just going to cost you way more. You can't even compare buying this instrument with actually learning or getting... Um, okay, what you could compare it with is a, get a session bass player, pay him, what, like 300 bucks for the hour? Or you get this for $150 and then you've got a session bass player. I mean, that, when you look at it in that perspective, then you get the idea that this instrument is actually good value. This is what I love. This I love this. So drag and drop MIDI patterns with over 350 patterns arranged across 81 song presets. Prime Bass covers a diverse range of styles and performance techniques. Quickly find the pattern you need with new genre tabs in the browser and use MIDI drag and drop to adapt the pitches in your sequence. Enhance the feel of the performance by shifting accents between downbeats and offbeats and dial in swing and humanize to match the groove of prime bass to your arrangements. So you can actually just drag and drop those performances, those patterns and melodies that are in prime bass straight into your door. And then you can inside prime bass, you can tweak it before you drag it. So you don't just have a, an exact carbon copy of that melody or pattern, which is kind of nice because then, you know, you're making it your own rather than just ripping it straight out but if it works it works and you can rip it straight out and then you can authentic you've got authentic articulations in prime bass as well so prime bass offers a vast range of articulations to cover any playing style including fingers plectrums slaps and pops so you can get that real boom 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 i don't know why i'm doing that but you get the idea like the really slappy bass or finger bass there's different ways of how you play play the bass open and muted notes, chromatic dead notes, harmonic and more. And the engine ensures authentic transitions and repetitions by adding realistic hammers on, pull-offs and fret noise noises automatically and a wide range of slide intervals ensure smooth slide transitions between any two separate notes for believable depth in your performance. I mean, this is pretty much where we're going into the future. And it is complete control. It's, you know, can use it through to complete control if you have that ecosystem in your studio. But yeah, kudos to Native Instruments. They are literally the king of just continuously releasing, you know, new instruments, new sounds, <clears throat> you know. We don't cover all of the stuff that Native Instruments releases on this podcast because it is quite a lot. And I, I also, I'm not sure if you guys are interested. I mean, they do release a lot of those different uh, string libraries as well. And we haven't covered all of that, but, you know, they do harness the sound. And I guess this, again, is the future of music production and the way it's going is that you essentially would just have access to the session players inside your computer, all in the box, of course. That is the zeitgeisty term of today. All right, let's move along to the next piece of cool software music, software that came out in the last week. And this comes to us from Waves, all the heavy hitters today, isn't it? Waves, Native Instruments. I think we're going big time. Universal Audio, we'll get to that. We're going to get to that. I know that you've, if you saw, you know, you read the title of this podcast, you're excited for that. That is very exciting. We've kept that best for last but you can skip along to the end if you don't want to hear the rest of this but you shouldn't because there's some pretty cool stuff here anyway <clears throat> waves has just released and this is free a sample finder now not the most sexiest thing it's not an instrument it's not a drum machine it's not a software instrument but it is an it's kind of a tool that actually i'd personally other than xln's xo which is a a drum rhythm composer but also like a sample collecting piece of software. I didn't really have a sample finder, and I know that there are others out there. However, this is pretty good. I, I've been using it since well, the last two days since it's been released, and I really like it. It's very user-friendly. I just point it in the direction of my sample libraries, and it more or less just put them all into the software and... And then now I can type in, for example, I could type in cat and it will find all the samples that have to relate with either a, maybe a cat meow or a synthesizer that sounds like a cat. And like just, I didn't even know <laughs> I had cat sounding uh, effects and in instrument sounds, but I do. So anyway, so your samples are a creative treasure, but only if you can find the right ones fast. That's so true. I mean, if you've been collecting samples like me, for example, you have so many, you don't even know what you have anymore, right? 
So Cosmos brings all the one shots and loops on your hard drive into one easy to search place. It uses advanced waves, new neural networks, neural network technology in order to analyze. Isn't that isn't that what Elon Musk is starting, that company? Anyway, auto tag and sort your entire collection of samples into one unified database where you can easily find everything, no matter where you place your samples or how the files are named, Cosmos will find them for you. Cosmos keeps you in the flow so you don't lose time or creativity. You can see all your samples visually laid out in front of you in three accessible views, waveform, list, and Cosmos. You can filter and search all your one-shots and loops by instrument, BPM, key, and even sonic characteristics such as brightness, saturation, and dynamics. And if you need to find a saturated kick, just type saturated and kick in Cosmos and all your saturated kicks will show up no matter what the files are actually named. Need to find a bright reverby drum loop in 120 BPM or a saturated synth sample in F F sharp minor with a cinematic F sharp minor, no sorry, F minor with a cinematic feel. Just choose the appropriate tags and Cosmos will deliver the samples you're after instantly. And you can easily addition your samples from within Cosmos with just one click, then just drag and drop the samples you want straight into your sample or door. See, it, it really is that easy. And I, that's why I really like it because I had Cosmos open the last couple of days. I was doing a job for a radio station and I needed particular sounds and I could literally just type it in and it would find, it would go through all my samples and it would find the relative sound based on my search and it was pretty good and I really loved the drag and drop. The drag and drop was super simple. There was no processing time, literally just drag and drop and I was using Pro Tools and it went in straight away. Don't know about other doors, haven't tested it on, on other doors, but you can have Cosmos just operating in the background. Actually, I might even have it here if you're watching on the, let's have a look, see if it's open. Yeah, so I haven't actually, haven't fired it up this morning, but here it is, it's firing up. So yeah, there's a whole list. If you're watching on the video there, you can see I've got Cosmos open here in the background. You can just have it open all the time. And if you need something like, let's try, I don't know if this is gonna have anything cause I don't know if I have anything in the way of a truck sound effect. Let's see, this is truck. Now it's come up with a one shot Vox Chop Starstruck. Let's have a listen. I didn't even know I had this. Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, make a banging techno track with that Vox sample there. But you know, like you can do all sorts of searches. You've got your tags, loops, like here we go. Let's look for a clean and then instruments. Let's say, I don't know, synth, clean synth. So these are just random samples that were on my computer. Like, clean but damn that was high and we got some swooshes and you got some loop synth loop here anyway we're not going to play those but you get the idea i can search through i can find sounds and samples very easily with cosmos and yeah definitely check it out it's free if you need help getting order with your samples, thank you, Waves. I mean, you probably need to have a Waves account if you didn't have one already. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with Cosmos. I haven't had any issues with it this far. All right, let's look at next one here coming to us. No strangers to the podcast. These guys are making regular appearances somehow, but it's because I like what they're doing. No affiliation, no kickback here. What is it? It's audio thing with noises and they have just released this is a brand new instrument the creative texture instrument so if you like drones if you like that eerie freaky sounds or perhaps you're a movie composer and you need to create suspense or you just like ambient sounds then you're gonna love noises and what is noises? Well, it is a twisted rainbow of sound. Noises is an experimental instrument with a playful and inspiring interface designed to bring a vast world of noises into your music and audio production. Noises is the fourth plugin that have been developed from the German composer, that guy with the sweaters, Hanback. 
hour don't know the reference he created he crafted hundreds of recordings of rare vintage measurements and tape equipment analog synths strange field recordings electro acoustic and magnetic field experiments and more in his lab to create this creative noise instrument with us us being audio thing of course it is designed to be fast and inspiring to use with a big dial at the center inviting you to search for sounds and a sequencer to make them music the result in a minimum of clicks for a maximum of sound use subtly it adds coherence to your tracks used creatively this can be the basis of the whole track and it's easy to create a modern scores for films games and podcasts with it and a quick tool for sound design if you need a break put it on and relax to carefully curated noise sequences so again not a musical plugin for everybody. Let's have a listen to it. This is going to probably be pretty droney. This is Heimbach Noises. Kull Mung. Let's have a listen. So there's a bit going on there, you can hear some birds, water, a bunch of different sort of droney synth sounds. I mean, maybe this could be like, this to me sounds like meditation sort of stuff, like, or even getting a massage, <laughs> I don't know, relaxing massage, you get the idea. Let's try another one here. See, perfect for movie composers or... TV composers. Ooh, that's scary. <laughs> it's eerie. That's really nice actually. You can hear some sort of swirling drones going as well. So I guess you're going to get all of that with noises. Beautiful. Actually I could see it is quite a relaxing sounding plugin. Like if you need something to just sort of relax or unwind, then this Noises by Audio Thing and Hanbach, Hainbach, I'm probably butchering that name is something worth checking out now some of the other features here let's have a look so trigger if sync is set to free you can use the trigger button to turn noises on and off or hit any midi note you can record and automate these controls if sync is set to host it will start and stop with your door playback so i'm guessing that's just sort of getting it all in sync with your door or your music track that you've made and the origin is noises came from the need to have a solid noise source always at hand for testing plugins. But as we got into ta talking with Hambuck, with whom he had just made Gong Amp, he grinned and turned on his wall of rare electro electronic laboratory equipment. His glowing noise generators hidden behind countless cables started howling, screaming, and singing. Listening to the absurd tones of this obsolete yet treasured equipment, we knew we had to make this more than a simple noise source. Noises became an instrument, hence we have noises from Audio Thing here. An operation. Noises are all about playful and inspiring interaction for sonic exploration designed to give you more sound with fewer clicks at the heart of noises is a big knob. It acts as a precision crossfader between the eight sounds and each bank carefully selected and designed by Humbuck, inspired by the motor controls of test equipment and vintage multiplexers. We added a sequencer to control the knob. You mute sounds, play sequences, randomize them, and make it jitter like one coffee too many with the fuzzy control. So you got 21 banks and you got a bunch of different sounds here, electroacoustics, filter bank, flight to Mars, military wires, noise, denoise, odular, like these are all the different instruments that this noises has been sampled off. You can create your own banks. There's there's the fella there, Heimbach. Good work. Based out of Berlin, this guy, here he is again, if you're watching on the VOD cast. 
All right, let's move along to our next piece of exciting news here. Now, this one is just a quick mention. We did speak about this at the end of last year in the podcast season two, the release of Apogee Duet 3, and some reviews have hit or been coming in. This one here from Music Tech, and it seems to be doing pretty well. They've given it an 8 out of 10. Now, what is the Apogee Duet? If you did miss that podcast, it is an interface, a small mobile portable interface, and Apogee makes some of the best converters on the planet, or at least up until, you know, I think even like 10, 15 years ago, they were the go-to converters. If you needed a, a high-end converter, Apogee was that was it. You There was nowhere else to look. Like, Apogee made the best. And anyway, so this is the ultimate... Is this the ultimate mobile recording interface? Well, Music Tech have given it an 8 out of 10, and their verdict is superb recording results, overall performance, top quality design and build, of course, always from Apogee onboard DSP for zero latency recording via channel strip, and it's bus powered over USB. So it really is a portable thing. So it is, these are some of the cons here. Expensive for the amount of I.O. on offer. And the dock tidies up the cable clutter but costs extra. So mainly some of the negative results are on the price. It, they're not cheap. Uh, and there are now these days, like back in the day, like an Apogee has been making these small mobile audio interfaces for quite some time. And back in the day, there really wasn't many options. But now you've got Universal Audio. You know, they've just come out with those Vault audio interfaces, a little bit chunkier, but they have great, fantastic sounding audio interfaces. In fact, my, if you're enjoying these smooth vocal tones right now coming to you, I'm going through Universal Audio's, uh, what's it called? Uni- Unison technology with the Apollo X6. So I've, I think I've got like a Neve emulation on this voice. So it's very smooth and warm for y'all. <laughs> Um, but the Apogee has great converters and great sounding inputs. So you're going to get, you know, similar results with that, of course. But what I'm trying to say is that there's a lot more competition. It's not just Universal Audio. There's a bunch more. I can't think of them off the top of my head, like Focusrite and so forth. There's a lot more competition now. So Apogee isn't the in a bit, but... You know, if you do want good quality, check out this review here over on musictech.com where they, they gave it an 8 out of 10. They ripped it open. They opened it up. They checked it out. There is this Apogee Duet dock which you can purchase, but I don't know. That seems a bit, that looks not that great actually, but it is bus powered. Anyway, I'm not going to go into the details of that. We did already speak about this on the podcast, but I did want to just mention the reviews have started hitting in as this has started shipping. All right, last one before we get to our big piece of news for the podcast today. Just a quick mention here, no affiliation here, although I probably could have put an affiliation link here because Baby Audio are no stranger to Emlyn in the mix, always supporting the channel with their goodies. And I believe there's something new on the horizon. I did have word of that, but we don't know what that is just yet, which I will be sharing with you as soon as that is released. However, this one we spoke about last year, plugin of the year, I believe it won. It did, yeah, we, and we did a whole feature on this. Spaced Out is actually on special. How could I forget that? <laughs> We're only seven podcasts deep this year. I already forget what plugin of the year was in 2021. Oh, it's all a blur to me. I don't care. No, just kidding. I do care. But anyway, Spaced Out by Baby Audio, the modern space echo plugin is on special as a flash sale right now. I thought I'd mention it on the podcast. Again, no affiliation, no kickback for me, but it is 39 bucks. Go check it out. It was $69. Not an expensive plugin at all. This plugin, literally, Future Music gave it plugin of the year. Computer Music gave it a 10 out of 10. Everything recording, 5 out of 5. Like it, just, it just won a multi-award winning plugin. And I've covered it many times, so we're not going to talk about it again. All right, let's get to the big beast of the day. Biggest announcement of the day. This is, it might not, for some people, might not be the most exciting thing. This to me is very exciting. Universal Audio has come out with a bunch of hardware microphones. Now, this came out of nowhere. Like, this literally just came out of the left wing from... No one, I mean, at least I didn't know in my inner circle that Universal Audio was working on microphones. So this this is huge, actually, because 
If you've been following this podcast or if you're into music gear and music technology and where that's all going, you would know that Universal Audio are the heavy hitters or becoming at least they're in the top five heavy hitters of music manufacturing companies. And they're covering, they're covering everything. They, they've slowly just started going in more and more into their hardware arena. I mean, they're doing hardware now for a while, but their software is bar none. It is some of the best sounding emulated software on the planet. And it's expensive. It's expensive as hell, but it sounds really, really good. Again, I said earlier in this podcast, I'm running through a Neve emulation right now. My voice is running through a Neve emulation made by Universal Audio, and it sounds freaking hot. sounds really good. And, and also, not to mention I'm using the SE microphone, their like Rodecaster-style microphone, podcasting microphone. But now, now we've got Universal Audio hitting the microphone market and it actually just excites me. And one of the things I have to say straight off the bat, and I know that music companies seem to be doing this of late, is they're just their equipment is aesthetically pleasing. Like if you're watching the video right now, you'll see there's a few different models. We've got like these pencil cardioid style microphones. We've got like a podcasting streaming microphone here. And then they've teamed up with Townsend Labs Incorporated, which we're going to talk about because that's probably the most interesting and exciting piece of gear out of this lot of microphones. Then you've got some Universal Audio style studio condenser microphones. You've got like a smaller one here. I'm not sure what the different... Uh, differences on those but we will have a look at that but the first microphone we're going to look at out of this lot is of course the podcasting microphone being that streaming and podcasting so popular everyone's doing it right even i'm doing it. i'm doing it right now aren't i <laughs> so universal audio standard sd1 is the first microphone out of this lot and they've put it up the top here because they know this is probably going to be their most out of the lot most popular microphone like you think about it if you purchase a universal audio interface which they they're amazing the apollos or the vaults which they have now that vault thing which looks fantastic and has an 1176 compressor emulation inside of it i don't know how to do that but anyway that's on the there's only three models that have that i, I believe two or three models anyway you think about it, you've got the audio interface from Universal Audio. What do you need next? Oh, I need a microphone. Well, look, there you go. Universal Audio just delivered with that. So <clears throat> streamers and podcasters, capture your best every time. Get polished studio sound that's broadcast ready with their dynamic mic tailor-made for speech, vocals, and instrument. Let's click on here. We're going to have a look, quick look at the SD-1. So with the SD1 dynamic microphone, you can capture vocals, instruments, live streams, and podcasts like pro, quickly giving you polished studio sound that bro that's broadcast ready. And you can get pro vocals anywhere. The SD1 delivers studio grade sound and style no matter where you record. It's tailor-made for close mic speech and vocals with simple design that rejects background noise like fans, refrigerators, and noisy bandmans. <laughs> bandmans. <laughs> Bandmates. But I don't mind the word band. That's pretty funny. Shape your sound with quick controls. Reduce rumble and mud with your recordings with the SD1 selectable low cut filter. And with its enhanced articulation boost, vocals and instruments will instantly stand out with added presence. And there's a picture there of the SD1 in a close proximity of a, a beautiful looking acoustic guitar. And you can, of course, sound like the pros when you team it up with the Apollo channel strips. Take the Quest guesswork out of getting polished with polished sound with Apollo's custom SC1 mic presets. Oh, okay, cool. Featuring radio ready EQ and compression, setting for vocals, guitars, and broad broadcasting. That's pretty cool. I wonder if I'll get that as a free upgrade. I, I don't know. I, I'm de I definitely want to check this out. It's a very, very, again, they're going down the aesthetic route here. I don't know who they teamed up with to make these microphones, but they are damn aesthetically pleasing and knowing again that they're universal audio, I think they're going to be a very high quality. Now, there's no price or shipment date for these as yet, but I 
dare say that it will all happen pretty soon. Uh, so with a sleek modern design and rear-mounted XLR jack for easy cable runs, SE1 will instantly level up your production space, whether it's music, podcasts, live streams, or Zoom meetings, your new go-to home studio mic has arrived. Now, I believe it would be phantom powered. I do like that it has the plug on the back. And I guess you could use your mic stand to sort of swivel it and get adjust it to get it right. But again, we're not going after aesthetically pleasing. We need it to sound amazing, right? So it is a dynamic microphone, dynamic studio vocal microphone with low cut and articulation boost. Cardioid polar pattern rejects all access sounds and zoom noise. That's pretty cool flat response, shape vocals and instruments with SD-1 and poly channel strip presets, internal shock mount reduces low and rumble and mechanical noise, rear mounted XLR jack for easy cable management, built in windscreen, reduces plosives and breath noises, quality UA, craftsmanship and size rugged build. That is actually interesting, it has a built in windscreen, you can't actually take that off. Like this one here I've got from SC, I can actually take this windshield off if I want to but I keep it in, get rid of the plosives. So that's the SD-1 standard microphone. Let's go back and look at some of the other products because there's quite a few. I mean, Universal Audio, when they release something, they just tend to just do everything at once. Instead of just releasing one and testing the waters, I like that. I kind of like that. Just go hard. They go, all right, we're going to do... You know, we're going to do microphones now and we're just going to cover the whole spectrum of microphones. And I think it was needed. So you've got the... SP1, which is a home studio recorder, professional stereo sound easily, expertly record instruments, live performance, and more with their natural sounding small diaphragm condenser stereo microphone pair. That's the SP1, those little pencil microphones I was talking about, which would be perfect for, yeah, you can, if you're having a look here on the video, you can see being used with an acoustic guitar there. Now, this is where things get interesting because this. <laughs> this is going up against Slate. And I know Slate Digital were the first company to come out with the virtual microphone, the VM1, which essentially is just like a bulk standard studio microphone, but it is designed to make use of their virtual mic cabinet racks, which what is that you might ask? Well, basically with Slate Digital, they had a bunch of software emulations of all the top microphones around the world. And you could use the Slate virtual microphone to emulate any of those microphones, any microphone sound you wanted, you could get with the virtual mic. Well, now this is what Universal Audio have done. They've done the same thing. And it looks like they've towned up with Tanzan Labs. So vocalists, creatives, and engineers get the sounds of the greatest microphones ever made. Choose from 34 of the most sought after microphones ever made with their award-winning dual capsule microphone modeling system. So this is the Sphere L22 modeling microphone. We click in here to learn more. So record with the greatest mics ever made. The Sphere L22 modeling microphone system gives you the sound of classic mics used by everyone from the Beatles and Beyonce to Radiohead and Frank Sinatra. So grab the keys to the ultimate mic locker. Featuring 34 legendary mic models of Newman, Telefunken, AKG, Sony and more, the Sphere L22 gives you your produ produ productions, the most sought after ribbon, condenser and dynamic microphones ever made. So here we have Universal Audio's attempt at the virtual microphone locker room. And I, I'm sure this is going to be no exception. This is going to be high, high quality. I can just say this very confidently, being that it's Universal Audio. Look, if I'm wrong, you can, you know, in the future, you can totally criticize me or ridicule me for this, but I reckon this is going to be beast. So the Sphere L22 lets you audition classic mic types before during and after the recording with any interface in your door. And when paired with an Apollo interface, you can do this with near zero latency. So get big stereo sound with a single mic. Thanks to its dual capsule design, the Sphere L22 lets you easily record piano, drums, strings, and more in stereo. And you can even use different mic models on the left and right channels for professional acoustic guitar recordings. 
built to last a lifetime with dual gold splattered diaphragm and lowest noise of any mic in its class. Sphere L22 outfits your studio with a premium large diaphragm, condenser microphone, precision built in, deliver years of inspiration for your music, podcasts, and voiceovers. They always say, whenever I, I read a microphone marketing advertisement, it always says best in class. I actually don't know what that means. Like, they must be comparing it to other large diaphragm microphones in that class we need to know what class is anyway comes fully packaged and yeah you got the 34 cuss you know 34 different emulations of microphone there's already a couple of customer reviews that have come in just the last couple of days sounds fantastic software is awesome this is mic modeling done right look i i i could almost just get this knowing that it's going to be good and I would like to try that. I would actually just like to try that virtual microphone thing. I think that is probably the way forward from here. Just having, I mean, what is it as musicians? Why do we have to be so spoiled? You know, I, I watched a really interesting video. I'm going to go a little bit on a tangent here. I watched a really interesting video just yesterday with the producer, Dead Mouse. And he was, he was doing a podcast or something. And it was really interesting because they were talking about, in that podcast, they were talking about, or it wasn't a podcast, I don't know, it was a video. I'm not quite sure, but they were just a chatting video. And they're talking about why do we strive so much to emulate the past, you know? Like it is, there is some incredible things that happen in the past, like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and, and all this incredible recording processes that happened and, and produced these amazing artists. But, you know, as we sort of move into the future, shouldn't we be looking for new and innovative and creative ways that we can create and we can record and make brand new sounds. And I thought that was very, very deep and very excellent way of looking at where we should be going rather than why we're always striving for the these amazing sounds. I know that these are going to be emulated on the best sounding microphones on the planet. I get that and I get that we are obsessed with analog and we know that it sounds better than digital, right? And that the the whole point of the computer and, and especially in the 2020s, now that we're in the 2020s and we're in 2022 and things are sounding better and better and better inside the computer is that we should be working towards maybe making new sounds or new creating new things. I think we get, as humans, we sort of get stuck in the past quite a bit. But uh, nonetheless, this still bloody excites me. It excites me because I want to try this. I have some really actual high-end microphones in here. I mean, I have a microphone. You can't see it. I'm looking off to my right here. But I have a microphone that was actually handcrafted in collaboration with SE Microphones, who have supported this channel, and shout-outs to them. I love them so much. But I have a microphone that was actually handcrafted with Rupert Neve. So this is one of Neve, one of his first forays into microphone technology, and it is um, freaking believable. It's Rupert Neve. Like, he knew. He's the godfather of sound. So he made an incredible sounding microphone. It is not, it's not a virtual microphone, so I can't emulate a bunch of different microphones, but it is its own sound and it's very very nice sound it's a very expensive microphone i didn't get it free i did have to pay for it but it sounds unbelievable and you know having a good microphone i'm really going all over the place here about i hope i'm making some sense but having a good microphone is in my opinion imperative because as everything becomes electronic, as everything becomes emulated, the one thing that can't be emulated is your voice. If you're a singer, this may appeal to you, but the one thing that can't be emulated is your voice, and that is probably the most important instrument out of all the instruments is your voice and being able to create something new and creative. That said, you want to be a good singer too. I'm not really a great singer, so I always use a bunch of effects in my voice to make it sound amazing, but you know... I think it's exciting and I know, again, I'm going to say this for microphones not being the most sexiest item of the studio, they are still one of the most essential and getting that sound into the computer and sounding amazing and as close to the realism as possible, that's what you want. But all of that jibber-jabber I just said, that's why you come to this podcast. I ramble on this podcast and I've said that many times. But this excites me so much about Universal Audio releasing, hard, just getting into hardware like so much because we had the UF, UAFX pedals that were released last year 
and the new audio interface is the vault which is sort of like a i guess they're more of a I don't want to say cheaper because that makes them sound worse, but they are a more affordable audio interface. It's still very high quality uh, as opposed to the Apollo mobile audio interfaces, which can get a little bit pricey depending on which model you get. But this is really exciting that Universal Audio has come out. Now, the last ones here we didn't speak about are the Studio Professionals. So experience Sonic Nirvana with a premium microphone handmade in California. Wow. So give your recordings the unmatched sound of David Bock design microphones lovingly built in Santa Cruz. So these are coming in fall 2022. And these look just aesthetically, they look amazing. I'm going to have to get my hands on some of these. I've already got so many microphones, but I have to say, I do want to check out these universal audio microphones because they, this really excites me. I like the idea of, you know, a selection of different microphones that you can try and get some very nice sounds and aesthetically pleasing doesn't hurt either all right i hope that my ramble and i hope that my overview of the universal audio microphones has helped you somewhat decide whether you want to get these or if you think these are just a um you know uh, just an aesthetic pleasing thing for the studio but they're not actually going to help you you know with your recordings i don't know we we have to obviously hear these to really know and I guess we have to vigorously test them and how are they going to sound. I'm sure they're going to be amazing, but that's the podcast for the day, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, we'll be back every week. Next week, we'll be back. It'll be episode eight, and I'll be looking and scouring the internet for the best amazing music technology news for you guys, as I always do. Now, if you enjoyed the podcast and or if you've been enjoying this over and over, consider supporting the channel and the podcast. The link is below in the podcast description and in the YouTube video if you're watching that. And if you could leave me a review, scroll down to the bottom. I'm doing the action here. Scroll down to the bottom of the podcast app that where you're listening to this podcast, you should be able to write a review. I'd love to get your feedback. Three, four, five, one, two, whatever you believe. Starting at three, obviously being average, five being amazing, and one, you didn't enjoy this podcast at all. But leave your honest feedback. I would love to hear from you. And with all that said, leave your comments in the comment section below as well. If you want to talk about what do you think about these microphones, I'd love to know what your opinion is. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining me. Peace out. Peace out.